It's fine. As long as we like show it holding it up without it looking broken, it'll be fine. <laughs> well, I mean, they can't have all been in perfect condition. Yeah, true. <laughs> Things happen and erosion, and it just kind of like, boop, goes um, away. At the fact that it took her hours to do that. Guys, give me some water. I'm gonna like mold it together. Go get water. Hey, there's water right there. We're surrounded by water. Behold, one of the greatest and unexplained mysteries in the world. The obeyed lizard man statues. These statues hold countless mysteries and unanswered questions related to their past, their creators, and history around the world. Who were the individuals inhabiting the civilization? And how did they emerge into existence? What is the importance of the obeyed lizard men statues? And what was the reasoning behind their unexplainable lizard-like structures? To unravel the mysteries and answer the questions surrounding this wonder, we will take a journey into the past, 7,000 years ago, when Mesopotamia, the first known civilization began to prosper. Our journey begins in the years 5500 BC to 4000 BC of the Sumer period, where Mesopotamia's first civilization developed in the far south region of the Sumer, which is part of modern-day Iraq and Kuwait. The Sumer region was first inhabited by the colonizers known as the Proto-Euphradians or Ubadian people. The Ubadians were the first individuals who were documented to have developed their own civilization by taking advantages of their environment for agriculture, establishing trade networks, and even industries. Weaving, metalwork, leatherwork, pottery, and masonry became necessities created and perfected by the Ubadians. After all their creations and achievements, the Ubadians began to expand north and create villages that would continue to grow into the largest cities of the world during their time. One of these greatest villages will be known as Eridu, the first and oldest city recognized by many scholars and scientists. At some time, during 4500 BC, the Sumerians arrived in Sumer and incorporated their language and knowledge into the Ubadian civilization. Scientists are uncertain as to how and why the Sumerians arrived at Sumer, but for hundreds of years they believed that they were the first civilization. In 1919, however, the theory that Sumerians have been the first civilization in the world was debunked by the discovery of Egyptologist Harry Reginald Hall in the archaeological site of al Uvaid in Iraq.
Hall's discovery would change the world and all known history. In Aluvade, Hall discovered artifacts that dated 7,000 years back to the Ubaid period. But most importantly, Hall had discovered the Ubaid Lizardman statues. Hall's discovery had left him perplexed beyond explanation, since he had never in his entire career seen such rare and ancient statues. But what bewildered him the most was the lizard-like structure of the humanoid statues. Hall could not decipher the most important question of all. What was the meaning of the statues the Ubadian people left behind? And what was the reasoning behind their crafting? As to why these statues were created in such a way, could this be because lizard people genuinely used to roam the planet Earth? This can be supported by numerous things. The statues discovered depict these reptilian people doing everyday things, which can undermine an existing theory that they solely existed in the form of royalty. When considering social hierarchy, the various poses they were crafted doing can be common to both a royal class and an average class. To make the whole idea even more realistic, just as any prominent society or race of people, each statue holds a unique pose, showing that they were both individualistic and distinct from one another. With this individuality combined with a potential class system, it seems as if historically, the existence of lizard men is not as illogical as it may seem. Then again, what if these humanoid lizards are not just blasts from the past, a historical anomaly, but instead a presence that is still here today on the earth, but let's say, hidden in plain sight? A very popular theory amongst conspiracists is that these reptilians, their origins being the obeyed lizard men, are actually still roaming the earth today. More specifically, that prominent historical and political figures were and are actually lizard people. This idea has become increasingly more popular as of recently, with figures such as Mike Pence, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and of course, the Bushes, being accused of hiding their reptilian identities. Diving deeper into the unexplained, we are introduced to the reptilian elite. Essentially, an idea that all of the world's most important people are a part of a secret group of lizard people. Their goal? Well, this varies among believers. Some will tell you that they're here to steal Earth's gold, as it would stabilize their original planet's atmosphere. Others, however, will tell you that their sole purpose and reason for existence is to cause human suffering. Then this would be based off of the theory that they actually feed off of negative energy. Most believers, however, will opt for the more recognized option, that the reptilian agenda is plotting for power, that their goal is complete and utter world domination. This goes hand in hand with the growing belief in the New World Order. Introduced by David Icke, a preacher and initiator of these conspiracies, the New World Order would essentially place control of the planet in the hands of the reptilian elite, in most cases, meaning political figures. But these are just a few of the conspiracies of today, and even historians are still puzzled about the structure and significance of the Ubaid statues. Just how were the statues constructed, and how did the Ubadian people, an ancient human race, have the creativity and incentive to make them? Well, according to researchers, the Ubaid period was the milestone in which societal advancements were made. With the inclusion of different cultures and ideas, settlements thrived into larger towns, and older versions of agriculture and tools connected to modern day society were cultivated. This vast pool of ideas caused people to start thinking and acting differently. Similar to the Renaissance period, once people started settling, they began to focus on establishing their cultural identity. That was when pottery became a common occurrence. Now, typical Lubadian pottery involved high fire buff objects painted in black with designs that got even simpler over time. The lack of obsession towards detail implies that the Ubadian people favored efficiency and non-complicated workings that made living life easier. 
other than the mud brick houses, constructed alleyways, and food processing equipment made from ceramics, bowls, basins, and jars were made as proof of their innovative evolution, and the lizard-like statues they made could represent the history they wanted to leave behind. The relationship between the Ubadian people and the statues are indicative of one thing. The Ubadian statues are meant to show the domestic lifestyle and the social interactions of the Ubadian people. Cultural clothing were drawn onto their figures and all of the statues excavated were shown to be performing some sort of domestic task in relation to modern day living. For example, one of the statues is depicted to be breastfeeding her child and the arrangement of hair on their heads is supposed to represent the levels in the social hierarchy. The statue with the largest hair is supposed to be considered the monarchy figure of their society, and the Ubadian people were known to have inspired the structure of monarchy societies and settlements within the Sumerians, a nearby group of individuals who were recorded into existence several thousands of years later. But who can explain why the Ubaid people decided to construct a representation of themselves with deformed bodies and lizard-like heads? Why lizards? Just what were they supposed to mean? Well, there are actually several theories to this. Let's analyze the statues in detail. Serpents and reptiles were oftentimes worshipped as a sign of creation and fertility and godly standing. The Ubadian people could have been molding lizard-like statues to represent a sense of superiority because they had the power to create the first historically documented settlement. After all, they were in the middle of an innovative period. So agriculture-wise, technology-wise, Efficiency-wise, they were way ahead of the rest of the human race. They even created a social hierarchy whose very system included certain individuals having more authority over the lower ones. Maybe this mindset made them believe that their race would last for generations, and so they formed the lizard-like statues to show their desire to continue their race. Or they might not even have been human at all. Maybe the Ubaid people were reptiles walking the earth at the time and were actually beings to be worshipped. Or perhaps this odd structure is because of the Ubaid people having a history of actually shaping infants' heads, which could be an explanation of the deformed heads of the statues. Just like the Sumerians, the original existence and appearance of the Ubadians cannot be fully explained by scientists and historians, which makes the statues wonders and mysteries of the world. Their existence was only proven by the excavation site in al -Ubaid, but the statues themselves hinted at their possible origins and have created further explanations about their existence. Some of these explanations include more conspiracies and theories about worship and religion. Another idea surrounding these statues is that they were simply objects of ritualistic and religious worship. As people were often buried with them, historians suggested that they could have just possibly been considered a rite of passage into the underworld and nothing else. In fact, the mystery surrounding these reptilians is shrouded in religious illusions. One of the most prominent examples of this being the biblical story of Adam and Eve. Those well versed with the contents of the Bible might remember that when tossed out of the Garden of Eden, Eve was tempted by a serpent. The serpent symbolizes reptilians, and some conspiracists believe that this story describes the schism, or the change in relations between reptilians and humans from good to bad. Ike, a popular conspiracist mentioned previously, preaches that it was believed that reptilians had once been widely accepted within the Sumerian culture due to the statues of Ubaid lizardmen that seemed to have religious value. But according to his beliefs, they went underground and hid from humans, and that is what the story of Adam and Eve represents. The actual identity of the Ubaid people, however, 
cannot be found by historians. This could potentially mean many things. Were the Ubedian people actually the reptiles? Or did they casually live amongst them and accept this whole other race? And if so, did they view them as their equals or did they view them as royalty? Or maybe the statues were just that, statues. The real question that should be asked is how could these reptilian people even be linked to Earth all of these thousands of years ago? How did they get here? More importantly, who are they? Some theorists will tell you that the statues were not based on reptilians, but on extraterrestrials. That they were just aliens who managed to master space travel. And with the universe being vast and ongoing, is it such a ridiculous thought that there is other, more advanced life that exists besides the human race? Besides that, any popular theory, such as one to do with lizard people taking over the world, can be linked to the infamous Illuminati, one such case being when the Draco, a group of lizard people, were linked to being in charge of this secret society. Then again, some people believe these reptilians originated from a group called the Babylonian Brotherhood, another secret society and an interbred group between the ancient people in this case being the reptile Aryan princes and royalty from Iran with reptilians. This theory targets the past's impact on present society, with the belief that the Babylonian Brotherhood manipulated our current society via religious and cultural practices during the Sumerian period, and thus, human society has been altered forever. Some people believe this group controls the world today, and was established in order to rule and control the human race. Conspiracies of the 21st century were not the only controversial topics about the Ubaid Lizardman statues and the reptilian people since in the 1900s many people claimed to have experienced the presence of reptilians and so many newspapers came out with controversial titles and headlines that caught many people's attention. Much of the information and claims of lizards are not all accurate, but neither is all the information gathered by scientists and historians, which demonstrates that some mysteries of the world may not ever fully be answered by humans. It all comes down to what you choose to believe based on the information provided to you, your own interpretation. But then again, what if the conspiracies are true? What if there's a reptile sitting right next to you right now? What if the world as you know it is run by reptiles? What if they've already won? True. 